All right, welcome back everyone to BSG Online 5. We're now heading right into Spore with Savage Brick here. Yeah. I'm going to do a quick last check if we did get a donation, but it seems like we did not, so you are free to um, name the creature and the planet any way you want. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Well, usually uh, when I'm in the run, I just name it a single letter, a Q, usually. I mean, you can name the planet. Can name the planet like BSG. BSG. All right. So, uh, am I free to go whenever? Yeah, just uh, count it down and uh, the time I can uh, get started. Well, a few things I should explain before the run. I have some notes written down. This is a uh, for people unfamiliar with this game. It's an evolution simulator. You get to basically control your own creature. You start as this little uh, cell bacteria. And you can, you know, evolve, add stuff to it. And the game goes in five stages. And we're going to be going through all five of them. On easy difficulty. So, uh, let's go. Now, immediately I'm going to pick an herbivore cell and one that has two eyes adjacent to each other. Because these I can sell off for. One of these I can sell off for five DNA points. Which puts me five DNA ahead. And uh, DNA is basically the currency which with with which you buy parts with. Easy difficulty. BSG. All right. Countdown from three. Does that sound good? All right. Yeah, you can just count it down. All right. Three. Never get ready. Three, two, one, go. Start the timer. Good luck. So here I am in the tide pool, in this little cell. I'm eating these green plants to get DNA. DNA is not only the currency with which, with which you buy parts, it's also the, on the bottom, you can see the progress parts. That's what it's measuring in. It's measuring in DNA you get from eating. So the goal of the cell stage is just to eat a bunch. And there are a few ways to speed it up. One which I will add very soon, is I'll add a second mouth, one that's a carnivore mouth. All right, so I'm in the evolution place here. I'm going to add a carnivore mouth and keep going. So this allows me to eat both meat and plant. And uh, you see that meteor up there? That's a, that's a part that I can actually go and unlock, but I don't need that part. And, uh... Part unlocks you can get from killing cells with that part. So if I kill that guy right there, I unlock the spike part. But I don't need the spike part. I do need a part on this level right here. By killing a red cell, known as a booster, I'd be able to get the jet part. There's one there. And the jet part's really useful because it's a it's a speed uh, part that allows you to get these short, quick bursts of speed. But there's also a glitch you can perform where if you use your mating call at the right time, you preserve this boost of speed, allowing you to basically fly over the, all over the place. And you'll see it in a second. So I just added the booster onto me. Uh, that one wasn't too well timed. There we go. So that was, that booster is actually mostly to help me get this part, the cilia which is another really important part to get. It basically allows you to turn really fast, so basically together the cilia and the jet part is what it's called. Fry for a very uh, deadly combination. And it'll allow me to eat food faster. There isn't all that many, uh, there aren't that many glitches in cell stage other than the boost preserve. At least not any useful glitches. Oh. Right. Yeah, you also have to avoid the mate because don't need to go into the editor unnecessarily. That loses a bit of time. And uh, cell stage, it's got kind of a notorious reputation for being very uh, random. You know, because the food spawns are completely random and RNG can 
save you or you know in the end you can kill you kill your run that is uh oh uh oh all right so i just died in that cells poison and the problem with the the boost preserve glitch is that sometimes if you miss time it you'll not just you'll just not go anywhere for a few seconds and that obviously loses time So we're approaching the end of cell stage, and part of the benefit of both eating uh, plants and meat is uh, due to the consequence uh, system, which I'll explain a little bit towards the start of creature stage, but basically I'll become an omnivore in creature stage, which gives me the ability to add omnivore malice to my creature, and it gives me the ability to have the summon flock ability, which is very useful, very, very useful, and I'll show you when I get to creature stage, which is about now. So I'm going to add legs. That's the end of the cell stage. And I'm also going to make my creature really tiny because that reduces lag. But anyway, creature stage, I'm going to make a landfall and I basically become an animal. And so the summon flock ability, it's a really important trick in the creature stage because it saves... It's, you can save around two minutes throughout the entire stage. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll click F1. And I'll summon five creatures over, and they, they will help me to ally these creatures I'm allying right now. I'm, I'm skipping up some of the animations through jumping. So it's really helpful, especially when we switch to killing later, which we will because killing higher level creatures is faster than allying them. Alright, now I will evolve, and there's a glitch I'm going to perform here. <laughs> Usually I'm supposed to go right up to that other creature, but you can skip it by jumping that way. I don't even know how that glitch works. So I'm going to add several parts to my creature here. I won't go too in-depth on... Oh, the one part I really need the most isn't available, so I'll have to improvise a bit now. Uh, this is for the strike ability, which is the strongest the, the strongest attack. I need one more. Right. So that's our that's our beautiful creature. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save and exit. And it's for an interesting reason. It's for the it's because of the summon flock ability. Basically, there are several creatures that the game can select by default for the summon flock ability, and they're all not they're not super strong. So we can actually go and make a much stronger creature. And since the game will prefer to spawn in user made creations over Maxis ones, I think this is getting kind of complicated. It will spawn in the user made creation every time, so it's a nice way to cheese a system. And when that glitch was discovered, the world record went down almost immediately. So, yeah, I have my strong flock creature. Sometimes it's like a 1 in 20 chance that just the trick will straight up not work, but let's hope that doesn't happen here. There, I'm going to add one of my own creatures to my real pack over to the side over here. I can do that once every time I level up. Alright, so now I'm looking for a few more nests to ally. Something annoying about the... Finding the nest is probably the biggest time loss potential in future stage. Oh yeah, sometimes... That one is way too high level for me right now. Ah, here we go. I'll summon the flock. And I'll just ally this nest. And in order to unlock higher level parts, I have to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target the alphas of the nest. 
because whenever you uh, target an alpha, you uh, can get a part out of it. Uh, here we go. I want to avoid that. That's a epic cell. That's or epic creature. That's a not something I want to get near. Anyway, I need to unlock higher level parts of the ones I've added, and that will be really important. Uh, actually, I have a bit more time before my flock goes away. Uh, Alright, I was trying to check. There aren't five creatures in that nest, so I can't kill that nest. And here I can find one of my other nests. So actually I will drag these bones because these bones also give you parts. <laughs> Someone just knocked an, an, an egg all the way over there. That was kind of funny. Alright, well, this isn't the prettiest creature ever made, but it, it, it works. It'll function. It's, it's trying. It's trying its best. Yeah. So I upgrade some of my parts. Especially made a priority to upgrade the strike part. Because a high level strike part. Strike does the most damage out of all the parts, so it's important I have one of those upgrade quite quickly. Alright, I'll, I'll switch to killing right now. The killing combat in this game is nothing really all that special. I mean, you see my flock going to work. This is why we uh, this is why I exit the game to create the new flock creatures, because they're super strong. Here I'm like I like to target the nests that have the uh, the orange face, the angry face. Because they all they give you a bit more DNA when you extinct them. Usually you get 30 DNA for extincting a nest at this level, but if they're angry at you. Oh no, I died. Hmm, that that's actually kind of a problem, because I can only summon flock a certain amount of times. Excuse me. In in this run of creature stage. Because once it, the game uses a flock creature, it can't use the same one again. At least in the same session, you'd have to save and quit. I, I hope this is not like too complicated, though, because this game does have quite the complex mechanics, and you try and speed run it. All right, now where was where was that nest I was attacking before? I thought it was over here. Was it? I feel like it was. Oh, I should explain that. That's a glitch where if I pause and select a creature in front of me and then jump twice, I can get a super fast boost. And sometimes I have to wait up for my flock to come. Ooh, that's a rogue creature. Those are uh, really strong creatures, and they give you a lot of DNA. By the way, we're measuring this in DNA in creature stage again. You see on the progress bar on the bottom, I'm about halfway done. Oh, and right now we're having a... There's a uh, scripted event where there's a meteor coming down. Someplace, if I can see it. But that means I can't interact with... Oh, there it is. Can't interact with other creatures for a bit. At least not the rogue. And I want to ally the rogue because it's way faster than killing it. And you get the same amount of DNA whether you ally or kill it. Where'd that rogue go? Sometimes they're just really hard to find. Ah, here we go. Let's... I'll kill this nest first. Alright. Now where was that rogue? I wanna 
it'd be damn worth to find that rogue because they give you a hundred DNA for allying or killing. Let's see, since I've leveled up, I can actually add a another flock creature, pack creature. Uh, so. Hmm. Really want to know where that rogue went. This is kind of a problem because trying to find rogues is kind of the biggest problem we have at the route right now. Because it's not that easy to find them. The spawns are random. I guess I'll just migrate to a new nest right now. Here I'll do a faster boost glitch where I move backwards and then boost again. Ah, here we go. Here's my nest. I actually get some DNA for migrating to this new nest. Let's grab uh, two, new, two more new parts. Hello? Ah, sometimes the mage just doesn't respond. So you have to come up closer. Come on! Love me! That's annoying. Okay. So, I'll add that. Then I'll add... I shall add that because it gives me three bite and three sing. Okay. Alright. So now we're in the final phase of the game. I can kill this nest because... That would give me a good amount of DNA. Typically when you target nests a lower level than you, you will get less DNA. You get half the DNA, unless they are aggressive, which these ones are. And here's the... That's a standard flock creature, not one of the ones we made before. So they're much weaker than the other ones. I'm gonna have to kill this baby. Oh, I can actually ally this nest. Typically when you ally high level, higher level nests, they typically call for other nest mates to help them out, but if they're too far from the other nest mates, then it's not a problem. Like in this case, I'll actually have to push this guy away. I heard some attacking over there. I thought it was a... I thought it may have been a rogue. Alright, I'm gonna kill this nest, and then that should be enough to finish creature stage off of. So after creature stage, we move on to tribal stage. Oh yeah, and this right here, you see over to the left side, that's a really important part to unlock because it gives you speed 5, which means your members in tribal stage will walk way faster. And without that, the run can slow down by quite a bit. Alright, oh, look at the progress bar. I'm just barely not there. So I can actually, oh my god. Am I going the wrong way? Ah. Oh, look, a rogue. Although, I guess I don't actually have to ally a rogue. Because I can just kill one or two of these creatures, and that should be enough for me to move on. Alright, so. We have moved on. We are done with creature stage. That is it for creature stage. So yeah, that, that spaceship right there, that was actually another one of the scripted events. Alright, so, for tribal stage. There's no more DNA in tribal stage. We are going to be gathering food for the start.
food is sort of like the currency in this stage. First, I'm going to add some stat improving parts in the tribal editor. And tribal stage has an interesting glitch to it. So we're going to be allying all other tribes. All right, actually, before we get to that, I'm going to create a few babies to fill up the slots on the right. And there's an interesting glitch where if you change your graphics effects, the ba it'll allow you to purchase more than one baby at once. It's interesting. Th there's no other place in the game where that glitch is useful except here. Here it just happens to replay the animation and spawn a new baby. So if anyone asks you how babies are made in this game, <laughs> change graphic settings. That's what the... That's what it is. So, we... As I was mentioning before, we're going to ally all the... God, sometimes they just get stuck on each other. Put the food in the darn thing. We're going to be allying all tribes in the stage. And we do that using by playing them a concert. With instruments. Currently, we only have the wind horns. And typically, after we ally... A tribe. We would unlock more. We would unlock more. Uh, more instruments. But there's a glitch we can perform that'll allow us to not have to purchase any more instruments throughout the entire rest of the run. And since instruments cost 25 food, that's going to save a bunch of time because we don't have to gather that much food. See, right now I'm actually going to steal food from this nest as I'm allying them. Yeah. Uh, and that will give me actually the rest of the food I'll need for the rest of the run. Now I'm out. Even though I'm kind of pissing them off as they're, uh, as I'm allying them, they'll still go up to uh, green when, once we're finished. So here's the glitch I was talking about, so I'll actually, I press control S there to save the game, and then I move my characters over. So I will not, uh, so I will get credit for allying that nest, but I will not actually unlock new parts because of it. So I'll be able to finish the stage with just the wind flutes. Oh, and here's why we need to gather that 30 food, is because I need to gift these other tribes, because they're angry at you by default. And as an added benefit from not unlocking new instruments, these guys will only ask for the flutes, the ones we have. Which makes it quite convenient. Now there is actually... There are a few more glitches in Tribal Stage, but there's some case-sensitive glitches that I might not have the need to use in this run. Right. So I'll exit and then go back in again. Now travel stage is probably I'd say the boringest stage of the five. I'm kind of running out of things to say. What? <laughs> well, I was about to say, like, uh, while we are befriending stages, I'm gonna plug a few things uh, yeah. for Marathon. Go right ahead. All right. So besides uh, uh, being a planet here on Spore, uh, we are the Benelux Speedrunner Gathering. Uh, we organize bi-monthly gatherings in the Benelux for Speedrunners. Due to the situation surrounding COVID-19, we are currently doing our events online for the time being. This event uh, features streamers from both Benelux and the rest of the world, bringing you entertainment during the lockdown. But of course, when COVID-19 is no longer a thing, we'll be back to uh, doing events on site as well. Um, also, uh, to keep in mind, uh, during the last run, uh, the last run was played on PlayStation 2. 
and we are now partnered with Delfino Customs. Uh, Delfino Customs is a controller and console uh, business located in England. They specialize in uh, customization modifications and repairs. Uh, you can use the quote uh, BSG5 uh, on any orders uh, up until the 25th of June to get a five do uh, pound of your order. If you customize your com uh, controller cable with their uh, power cord service, uh, five dollar, uh, five pounds will also be donated to mine, so it's a win-win there. Uh, message them directly for all inqui inquiries on uh, via their Twitter uh, at Delfino Customs. All right, so I got really lucky with this final tribe spawn right here. And sometimes the tribes will uh, send out their their tribe members to collect food and whatnot, and I don't know where these guys were going, but. They, they went to a really convenient location. And sometimes the final tribe is really far away and you have to waste a lot of time walking over there. Oh my god, they're actually coming over here. Even closer. Alright, and there was... If the final tribe was really far away, there was a glitch that I could have performed. That would have allowed me to... I guess save a bit of time from what... I would have had to do otherwise, you know, send everybody over there slowly. I could have sent a few uh, tribesmen in advance and then activate. I can't do a concert without my chief, but there is a way to sort of cheat the system where if I have my chief over at the previous tribe and have a few members over at the next tribe to ally, then there's sort of a glitch where if I activate this ability right here, Flying Fish, I can actually activate, I can, or I can ally them remotely without the chief. I, I hope that wasn't too much to understand. But it's a neat little uh, complex game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Alright, so, right, as soon as this bar at the top fills up, we will be going off to Civ stage. And before I go, thank god this epic didn't come closer, because that would have been really bad. So, on to Civ stage. I... I'll actually be taking over... Oh! Get a bit of lag. I'll be taking over all other cities, religiously. There are three ways you can do it. Religiously, um, through military means, and economically. You can basically buy them. Buy the other cities. So, uh, what I'll actually do... So I'll take them over with my vehicles, and what I'll do is I'll make two vehicles, one that has very high religious power, and the other that has very high speed, maxing out the stats. So I can actually move my vehicles over to the other cities, the speed ones, and then when they're there, I'll switch them back to uh, really powerful vehicles, which allows me to take over other cities really quickly. Oh, and by the way, these are Spice Geysers. They basically provide most of the currency in this stage. So I want to capture a lot of them early. The other way to get currency in the stage is to destroy tribes. Oh yeah, sometimes it gives you a vehicle. I'm better off selling that. Now, for the viewers out there, it might be helpful to look at the mini-map down in the left corner. Oh, what? The first city spawned up there? Okay, I thought the first city was going to spawn here, because it always spawns off of a tribe. And I actually know this tribe is not going to spawn a city. I know that from looking at the lines on the middle of the map. Right, so here, we're going to switch back to my power vehicles. And we should take over the city quite quickly. I do love how this game keeps switching between playstyles. Yeah, that's part of what's interesting about it. I don't think there's a single other game like it. Alright, well, I was wrong. This city, this tribe was not going to become a city. 
So I can go and destroy that for a bit of extra money. Oh, that's going to slow us down a bit. That other vehicle. Oh, still went surprisingly quickly. Oh, wow. If there's, if there's a tribe along the way where I'm going, I might as well destroy it. Now, after I capture four cities, I will have the ability to buy aircraft. But I will not actually buy any during this run because they are quite expensive. Anyway, I have conquered the entire home continent. I'll use water vehicles to conquer the other continent. Just check. Oh, there is going to be one here. All right. For the watercraft, I'm actually using Maxis made vehicles. And the reason why, oh, I didn't probably didn't explain the rules to the game. You, the sport is a game where you have a sport PDI and you can download creations from other players, but there's a rule in the game because that creates too much unpredictability in the speedrun. So there's a rule that states your sport PDI has to be clear before you start a run. So if I wanted to create those water vehicles myself, I would have to make it from scratch. And it's just not worth taking the. 15 seconds to do so. Oh, there's a... Oh, there's a water... Alright. So we only have two more cities left. I will move a bunch of vehicles... Down, where am I looking? Down here. Now those, I didn't switch back to the speed vehicles because I figured they'd make him there, make it there. All other things were happening. But I guess I underestimated my speed. All right, we are up to nine cities, and after you reach nine cities, there's a chance the final city could surrender, but it's completely random. That, there, I activated a thing called Fanatical Frenzy, although uh, I was too fast to... Here, let me select a spaceship. Uh, I was too fast to, at capturing that city to have it be actually useful. Basically, if you have enough money, you can... At around uh, six cities, you can purchase this ability that captures all the other cities. All right, so we're in space stage now, and right now I'm going to go over to first mission planet, and I'm going to scan that ship, and that'll give me. I, I I'm not too familiar actually with the story of this game, but I think that was the Drake equation that allows you to do interstellar travel. So in Space Stage, the goal is to get to the center of the galaxy. That's that's what the goal is. And right now what I'm doing is I'm clicking back and forth between the star to get myself that badge, the uh, Frequent Flyer badge. When I unlock Frequent Flyer 2, that will give me the ability to get an interstellar drive, which will expand the radius which my ship can go to other stars from three parsecs to five, which is required to, in order to get to the middle of the game. And the reason why I do it there is because it costs no energy. And energy is going to be really important because when you, whenever you click between a star, it costs energy.
right so i had to scan that city i don't even remember why it's been like forever since i played this game casually i don't know where what the story is but uh so uh right here i had to finish that mission in order to actually go to other stars and right now i'm going to go to this star system which has an empire and this system also has an artifact on it which is something i can pick up and sell for money i'm going to need around sixty-seven thousand dollars from this artifact to get me through the rest of the stage oh wow all right that's pretty good that's some good luck there yeah sometimes it's not it's worth less than sixty-seven thousand, and in that case you would have to go and get a different artifact a different part in the run so what i'm doing now is i'm going to go to this other empire here and i'm also i'm going to activate a trade route which I did with the other empire, and what that does is it unlocks a the trader badge, which unlocks allows me to buy energy packs, which is really important. The energy is down here towards the bottom right, above where my ship display is, and you run out of energy quite quickly at this point in the game because you haven't bought anything that increases your energy storage. And since this is a, this is a speed run, I'm gonna I prefer to do this the fastest way possible, which is just a straight beeline to the middle. And I'm going to need to go to one more star system or get a few more energy packs here. Right. Buy this guy's energy packs, recharge, go back in, buy five more. And the reason why I was able to buy five more right away is because I unlocked another badge there, which, which uh, replenishes everything in the shops and right here I'm getting towards the center and my range will go down to three parsecs because I guess it's more cloudy in the middle and currently I'm going over the territory of the Groks which I guess are the evil empire in this galaxy and as long as I don't stop or slow down too much on the star they shouldn't be able to touch me and that's really important. I do not want to run out of energy. As you can see, I'm just barely keeping my energy level above zero. If I run out of energy, it'll start shooting at me. Oh, and that's the center right there. Time as soon as the cutscene starts. And that's time. GG. Yeah, thank you. you what was the time? I'm um, taking a look right now. I think it was a 35.50-ish. No, that was, that's alright. That's around that's 2 minutes of low time. That'd be around 33 minutes in-game time. Uh, I need to yeah, use the okay. restroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, you can do so uh, after we uh, closed off. Uh, are there a few uh, final words that you would want to say? Oh, he's uh, already gone. You know what, we have a bit of time, so uh, I'll do a quick plug. Uh, I'll let him do his uh, final, uh, final words once he's back. Uh, but in the meantime, we do want to uh, thank ESA for supporting the event and for allowing, allowing us to stream on their channel. For information about their upcoming events and any changes due to the COVID-19 outbreak, be sure to check out uh, psamarathon.com. And you can also consider uh, using your free monthly private gaming subscription right here on the ESA channel. You'll get access to all the ESA emotes as well as several BSG emotes and you get to support both the events. If you'd like to, uh, to participate in an event similar to BSG, we highly recommend uh, checking out UKSG. UKSG is an event normally held in Glasgow, running four times a year, uh, supporting crisis. Currently, uh, they are also doing their events online for the time being, which makes sense, all things considered. I'm back. All right, welcome back. Are there any final words you, want, you would want to say? Uh, well, let's let the cutscene play out. And once this cutscene is over, I can't skip this cutscene, by the way. 
once the thing is over, I can actually look at the history and look at all the actions I've taken throughout the entire game. I always do at the end of a world record run. And I'll do it here as well. Basically, you have a bit of time, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to actually look for Twitch chat right now. And whenever you click off the game, the sound goes away. Now, I can't seem to find it. Do you have Twitch chat turned off for the BSG? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's on. I can't find it. Maybe my Twitch layout is wrong. we are back in the galactic core and uh just so you know that's where we had to travel from so we had to travel all the way down in here and it took us around five minutes so uh that's that's the entirety of the space stage uh so let's go over uh <laughs> the travel stage looks kind of weird because of the skips we did you know, saving and exiting. This creature stage I thought was kind of a bit slow. Yeah. Oh well. I wanted to find some rogues, but yeah, you know, I, I found that one rogue and then I lost him. Couldn't find him again. The still stage I think was pretty good. Not the best still stage I've ever done. It died once, but it was fine. Uh. Huh. And uh. See these right here. These are the consequence abilities from. This is this, and that actually gave me an ability in space stage that made my spaceship fifty percent faster. So that's a useful one. Uh, but most of the consequence aren't that useful. Uh, there's a summon flock which is incredibly critical, but. Yeah, and then the Speed Demon, which saved around 30 seconds. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. So we can actually see the time up in this corner. 793 million years. That's how long it took us to... From the moment we struck... From the moment we first swam in water to here. That was 900, 793 million. 420,000. Hmm. Right, we should uh, head off now um, and get ready for the next run. So, are there any final words you would like to say? Mm, no, nothing. Maybe I, I'll just get uh, killed by the Grocks. The, this is how this is how quickly they can kill you if you start uh, if you slow down. Boom. All right. Then um, while we are. Uh, we're we about to set up for the next run, uh, which will be Singles 2, which is uh, basically a boot-like uh, Sims, so be sure to stick around for that one. Um, in the meantime, uh, I've been Grandmeister, I'll be heading off uh, now and I'll leave you in the capable hands of Shadow Frost. Uh, also make sure to uh, leave uh, Savage Break a follow uh, if you enjoy these kind of speedruns like the Spore. It's a really interesting run, honestly, so be yeah. sure to follow him. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're heading into the intermission. I'll, we'll be playing a quick ad, so be sure to stick around. <laughs> 